Thank you, Elizabeth, for such a wonderful in <laughs> introduction. Um, I'm, I'm really gl glad to be part of uh, Dynamic Manipur and speak here among you youth. Uh, I'm so happy and nervous right now because this is my first time interacting with youth of Manipur. And uh, I hope I leave some kind of, uh, you know, uh, some kind of inspiration here with you because I hardly get to be here in Manipur and share my thoughts and my inspiration and my journey uh, of what I've done in Manipur. In 1998, that was really long time ago. Uh, I've come a long, long way, um, a really long way. Uh, yeah, it's been a long, like I never thought about it, but when I think, when I sit down and think, it's been a long way for me to come here and stand here in front of you guys and talk about my life. I mean, I'm so happy that I've done this to myself. Uh, my mother is here to, today, uh, she's joined us, um, and I would like to thank her for making me stand here in this pod podium and speak for myself and speak to you guys. I, I, I don't think I would have come so far without her support and her love. Uh, she has given me enough, immense freedom to do what I want to do in life. Uh, being a sports, being a, you know, I, I, I tried many things in life, you know, and she supported me throughout. Thick and thin, she's been there for me. She was the one who uh, asked me to go for Miss Northeast. And, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's been a big a pillar for me, an inspiration, you know. I, I wish all the mother, if any mother here present, like here, any parents, I would like them to be like her because what it did to me I, is this, you know, is this person who's standing right in front of you, talking to you, traveling so much, seeing the entire world, you know, working in, amongst Bollywood, you know, uh, internationally, everywhere. And it's a big achievement and I, I give, I dedicate this to my mother for being this big, humongous support to my life. Um, well, um, thank you. Um, I've been a sports person, yes. Uh, I've been a model. I've been, a, I'm a yoga a certified instructor. I love doing something physical. And uh, I am also a, a theater personality in Bombay. I've uh, acted in Prithvi Theater and NCPA. And, you know, uh, I performed in many places like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi. And I love acting. Acting is something that I've found recently, and this is what I want to do. I, I, I mean, it gives me immense, uh, you know, something that I never thought I would. I have this inside of me, and I can create something. I can become something if, if I want to. And it's magical, you know. It's it's just wonderful. So it comes this way. I've, I have, um, modeling came to me in a very surprised manner. I was a BA student in Bombay. Uh, I, like, I've done sports and I was studying and all of that and I, first of all, I had no idea about modeling and things like that. I was, I had an inclination towards it but I never, you know, paid attention because Who's gonna hire a northeastern look? You know, people who you know oh, in Bombay you see big eyes, sharp nose, masak uh, You know, that was that's considered beauty, right? When we think of beauty, what do we think? Mami hello, adagi manatun tum hello, hello. That's what we think, right, guys? So I never felt I was beautiful, to be honest. I never had this. Uh, you know, think that oh, like you know, I'm I'm very exotic, or I even I didn't even have this word. I didn't even know this word called exotic, which was you know, which came to me much later when I traveled abroad. So uh, when I was uh, you know, when I was selected from college, uh, I just happened to participate in participate in one of the modeling uh, you know contests that happened to. Uh, I mean, in one of this uh, festival in college, and uh, L'Oreal, which is one of the most famous hair color and you know beauty product that we have in 
uh, in this moment, uh, hired me for a hair commercial because as Manipuri, I had long, beautiful hair. So that's how I was recognized for my beauty. And uh, I felt very good, you know. I never saw any Northeastern model ever. And I never thought I would become one, to be honest. And that moment when my picture, when I saw my picture in a magazine, that was the first high that I got. A high that I never had, I never expected. And I felt, oh my God, uh, is this my picture? I've always, like, my mother used to yell at me for buying fashion magazines. She used to say, um, uh, you know, why would you buy, you know, you know, she would buy a magazine later, say you would rather study, you know, do something about it. So when I saw my picture in a magazine, I felt, oh, I can also be part of this world. And why not? What am I lacking in? So uh, after that, I was selected by Elite Modeling Agency, that is world's biggest, largest modeling agency in right now in 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 world uh, it's in america it's in uk it's in europe it's one of the biggest agency so i was selected by them and uh, luckily i didn't look back after that i mean it i would not call it uh, somebody just interviewed me and asked me how was the struggle i would not call this a struggle I, would, I enjoyed every bit. I, I would go for 10 auditions and I would get through one, one, one project. Imagine, you go for 10 interviews and you get one, one, one job. And that job kept me high, you know. That was, that was the biggest, biggest, you know, thing that drove me so far. Being positive, being the attitude that you have, turn it into positivity and, you know, you'll see magic magic happening around you. So that happened and um, I worked for Lakme Fashion Week, I worked for uh, Will's Fashion Week and, it, I, and Bollywood came to me. Uh, uh, Shah Rukh Khan was one of my biggest fans at that point of time when I was in college. And uh, somebody, my agency called me and they were like, oh, uh, why don't you go for uh, the audition which is happening and they're looking for uh, someone like you who's fit and toned and all of that. So I was like, okay, fine, you know, I just happened to go. Chale my office, chale Red Chili's. Shah Rukh Khan's production is called Red Chili. So I went there and I met Farah Khan. And uh, I was thinking, is this real? Like, I mean, you know, I mean, I've seen these people in, in on TV, you know. Uh, the first movie I saw was Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge in one of, like, I didn't tell my mother. <laughs> She's laughing right now. I mean, I went with friends. We, I was in school and we ran and we saw the movie and I was like, really? I'm working with Shah Rukh Khan? I was like, what? And I signed up. I didn't even know what am I doing in the movie. I didn't even know what is the script. And I was so excited and I just did it. I was appearing for my exam. I like, I mean, and I couldn't complete the entire shoot, but I enjoyed every bit. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing what Farah told me to do. And uh, I was just mesmerized by Shah Rukh Khan and just kept looking and, like, you know, it was a dream come true. And I never thought, you know, I never even dreamt doing something like that in my wildest dream. So that happened. And uh, my sister lives in Chicago and... Uh, my brother also lived with me in New York, and uh, I happened to visit her in, uh, in 2007. I, I was still with Elite at that point of time. I, it was just six months uh, since I was there with them. I signed up as a model. So I, uh, I went to New York visiting some friends, and, <clears throat> and, uh, and I was bored because I was traveling, and when you travel, you don't have much to do apart from sightseeing and all of that. So I happened to just Google and, you know, how about modeling in New York? And I never thought of it because I thought it's a very New York. I mean, imagine New York is world's biggest modeling, you know, uh, platform. So I never thought that I would have, you know, do something in New York. So I Googled and I found, you know, some website and, it was a modeling website. So I just happened to look, like, you know, just browse through what am I 
gonna find, you know. So I found something interesting and uh, it said it's a jewelry <clears throat> uh, audition, diamond jewelry audition. So I was like, okay, sounds cool, you know, why not just, just land up there. So I took my pictures, you know. And as a model, you have to carry your pictures all the time and, you know, you have to dress well and all of that. So I just happened to land up in this place, you know, it was in Manhattan, I still remember. And they're like, you are so beautiful. You are so exotic. I was like, really? Bombay, <laughs> you know, and when I was in Bombay, like, you know, mid ba, like, you know, karo, yaar, e, kitni so this is what I kept listening. And when I went there, and I'm like, she's so exotic. I was like, really? Like, you know, I, for the first time I heard exotic. And I was like, what is exotic? And I Googled, I came back home and I was like, oh, exotic, means that's me, you know? And after that, I did that shoot. Though, even though I was illegal living there, you know, I was just a tourist. I was not supposed to work there. I went as a tourist. Uh, I didn't have a visa, I just had a working visa, I mean, a traveling visa. So, that happened and I went for the shoot and na tonju to manre mit sulau manre adagi ai ki luxury ba pose the luxury ba sak se that it just enhanced me you know and it was and it was a diamond company from Africa one of the biggest you know a uh, diamond producing country and I was wearing diamond jewelry and I was like thinking what am I doing here you know palace compound adagi you maja ma kuk adagi thola aga ko Live, visiting New York and doing a photo shoot, there are cameras, there are, you know, there are backgrounds, there are people running around for me, doing somebody doing my hair, somebody is calling me pretty, you know. I was like, really? I mean, this is true, you know. I pinched myself. I was like, and they paid me. They paid me in cash because I was illegal. I, I mean, they couldn't pay me in check and I didn't have an account in America. So they paid me in check and I was wearing all this diamond jewelry. I was like, what am I, you know? And after that, they called me. The next day they called me and, would you want to be our brand model? I was like, what? Can you come again? Because I, I, I'm in America, I accent the kid, I'm in America. Uh, uh, could you repeat what you just said? They're like, would you like to be our brand model? I was like, what is a brand model now? You know, I, I know I'm a model, but what is a brand model? It's like, um, you would be our main model. I was like, oh really, but I don't have a visa. I don't have anything, you know. Uh, you can't pay me, you can't keep paying me in cash. I have to go back in three months. So they're like, we'll sponsor you. I was like, what? Sponsor my visa? I mean, I'm visiting and you're going to sponsor my visa. It was like, I called up my sister and I'm like, Jay, smile, smile, tarot, smile, meme, smile, hi, day. She's like, be careful, you know, because, <laughs> like, I mean, you know, you won't expect, you know, somebody just calling you randomly and, hey, you want to be, you know, I'm going to give you visa. Be careful because you might not know what's, you know, he might have a hidden agenda. I was like, okay. I went there, I, I took my friend along with me, uh, I went for the meeting and I make him sit down and like, you know, I spoke to the, and spoke to the daughter, the, 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 the one who runs the company, and the father, and they're black, they're African American. They're very liberal, you know, they talk uh, American, they're not Polish, like, you know, they're not very Polish, but they're like, they talk from their heart. And something just struck me and an instinct, I was like, I'm signing this. I'm not looking back. So that's the moment I signed and I worked in New York. I came back, I applied for my visa, Imada Hai, Babal Hai. I went back to New York and I saw failure. I saw a lot of failure. I was brand model, yes, right, but it was not, I didn't have work all throughout because it was not the biggest company or it was not one of the largest company they had. It was just establishing. So 
I lost hope, you know, I would go for like 10 auditions in a day, they, they told me, they gave me the liberty to work with other agency and I would just keep going, you know. In New York, cold heat, I mean, cold weather, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even have boots to wear, you know, in, in New York it snows like nine layer, inches of snow. Because I wanted to reach all the auditions that was happening in New York, which fit my look. So I would wear a plastic inside and I would wear, you know, whatever I had. I would used to wear sports shoes and take a heels with me. And I saw, you know, I, I, I lost, like, you know, sometimes I would motivate myself, sometimes I would just sit at home and do nothing and I was like, what am I doing here, you know? I was here, you know, to see the brand new Lynn and all of that and I, I you know, I, 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 I was losing hope. Then I called up my sister and I was like, you know, I don't know, what am I doing? What's going on? Then work started happening. Then she's like, don't lose hope, you know, you're just starting off. You don't even know the city properly. So just go out and do not give up. Then I started motivating myself and changing my perspective of seeing the world differently. I started thinking positive. And I started doing well again. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I walked for New York Bridal Fashion Week, which is one of the biggest, biggest event in New York. It's a fashion event. I, my pictures were on in the airport, you know. That little hope that my sister gave me, a little thought to be positive, that drove me, you know, wild. That, that brought a fire inside me, and I was like, why the hell, you know, I've come so far leaving my parents, leaving the country that I love, and I'm here in this cold weather. I don't know anybody. Why to give up now, you know? I've, I've tried so much. So I've started, I started myself again, picked up myself again. I started going out and doing work and all of that, and I, and I did well. I, and I was a successful person, you know. I didn't know, I kept blaming myself, like, what am I doing? I'm doing less. Every time I would do something, I would say, like, you know, I, what, what are you doing? You know, you, you are bound to do more, more and more, more and more. I became greedy. I did not, I stopped enjoying what I was doing, to be honest. I was not appreciating for what I have come for and what I was doing. And I would, I, I saw my picture on, on an airport uh, in JFK in New York. That's one of the biggest airport in, in America, in, in New York, sorry. Like, imagine seeing your picture in a JFK airport and beautiful, you know, I look beautiful, I remember, you know, I had a haircut and all of that. And somebody called me from Vancouver saying, that, hey, your picture is in Vancouver's airport. I was like, what? And I started appreciating, like, you know, I got appreciation from everywhere. Then, again, I felt that, oh, you know, so you're not doing so bad. So cheer up. But something inside me, like, you know, it, it like, you know, like, you know, something was pulling me down, you know. Maybe the place, maybe, you know, the people around there. So I said, I, I, why not move back to Bombay? the place I love the most in, in this entire world. I love Bombay, I don't know, something about Bombay just keeps me going. So I studied, uh, I said, if I, I was losing hope, then I called up my sister and I was like, you know, I don't know, what am I doing, what's going on? Then work started happening, then she's like, don't lose hope, you know, you're just starting off. You don't even know the city properly, so just go out and do not give up. Then I started motivating myself and changing my perspective of seeing the world differently. I started thinking positive. And I started doing well again. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I walked for New York Bridal Fashion Week, which is one of the biggest, biggest event in New York. It's a fashion event. I, my pictures were on in the airport, you know, that little hope that my sister gave me, a little thought to be positive, that drove me, you know, wild, that, that brought a fire inside me. And I was like, why the hell, you know, I've come so far leaving my parents, leaving 
the country that I love. And I'm here in this cold weather. I don't know anybody. Why to give up now? You know, I've, I've tried so much. So I've started, I started myself again, picked up myself again. I started going out and doing work and all of that. And I, and I did well. I, and I was a successful person, you know. I didn't know, I kept blaming myself, like, what am I doing? I'm doing less. Every time I would do something, I would say, like, you know, I, what, what are you doing? You know, you, you are bound to do more, more and more, more and more. I became greedy. I did not, I stopped enjoying what I was doing, to be honest. I was not appreciating for what I have come for and what I was doing. And I would, I, I saw my picture on, on an airport uh, in JFK in New York. That's one of the biggest airport in, in America, in, in New York, sorry. Like imagine seeing your picture in a JFK airport and beautiful, you know, I look beautiful, I remember, you know, I had a haircut and all of that. And somebody called me from Vancouver saying, that, hey, your picture is in Vancouver's airport. I was like, what? And I started appreciating, like, you know, I got appreciation from everywhere. Then, again, I felt that, oh, you know, so you're not doing so bad. So cheer up. But something inside me, like, you know, it, it like, you know, like, you know, something was pulling me down, you know. Maybe the place, maybe, you know, the people around there. So I said, I, I, why not move back to Bombay? The place I love the most in, in this entire world. I love Bombay. I don't know, something about Bombay just keeps me going. So I studied, uh, I said, if I go back to Bombay now, I don't want to be a model again. I don't want to have that, you know, skinny model body and, you know, starve myself to death. And it, it, modeling is a struggle. Like, you know, when you do fashion, you have to be skinny as, as a stick. <laughs> really, I mean, you look. 10 pounds, oh, sorry, 10 kilos bigger. When you walk on the ramp, you have to be very skinny. And designers, they would tell you on your face, you know, like, a, like, you know, you're, like you're nobody. you like treated like a, just any other, you know, donkey. I was like, what? And I didn't want that to happen. And I was like, why to struggle so much? So, um, the first introduction that, to acting that I had was this person who sponsored my visa. His name is Charles Huggins. I love him dearly. He's like my father figure. I went to Charles. I said, Charles, he's a black African-American guy, and I love him dearly. I, I'm still in touch with him. Whenever I go to New York, I stay with him. He is, I went to him. I cried. I, I, I still remember it was a cold winter New York day and I cried. I said, Charles, I'm not happy. I'm not happy, you know, I'm doing so well, I've earned my money, I've, you know, I, I'm doing so much, I'm not happy. And he's like, if you're not happy now, you'd never be happy. If you're not happy, if I'm not happy standing here talking to you guys today, I'll never be happy in my life. Never, ever. This one lesson, this one thing, one sentence that he told me, I woke up. I was like, yes, that's what I've been doing. I am not happy. And now I have to learn how to be happy. He's like, Lynn, you've come so far. You've come from a village. He calls our state village. <laughs> I, I showed him some Manipuri, uh, Manipuri, uh, Manipuri films and I was like, I was very proud of it, you know, hey Charles, you know, and his wife uh, is Michael Moore, if you, I don't know if you guys know about Hollywood, he is a very famous guy, he is produced, he owns one of the independent music, biggest company producer, whatever, you know, he owns many things, so I, and he owns one of the diamond companies owned by him in New York. So I was like, Charles, you know, I want, I want to share you something, you know, and this is from my state, and like, uh, my sister-in-law is an actor, you know, Maya Chaudhuri, and like, you know, she's like, oh, really? Show me, show me. So I was like, I Google, I YouTube, and pasanda no ngalam dai chai thule. Ay, kiki thamu idu kain tar thule. Mana, Lin, is this shot by uh, 
or like, you know, is this a home video? I was like, no, it's a, it's a, it's a movie. <laughs> and then he's like, really, it's a movie? Uh, okay, show me some more. Then I, Kamla, I, at that time, you know, Kamla was also famous. So Kamla, you know, like, you know, Google the YouTube and all. He's like, he got confused. <laughs> he's like, uh, is this a movie? He's like, I mean, he knows a lot about movies since his, his, since his wife is, uh, you know, an actress. So it's like he was like, really, is this movie? I was like, yeah, Charles. You know, it's, it's. I mean, it's very, uh, you know, it's one of the biggest uh, industry that's coming up. And I showed him Hindi film after that. He's like, this looks better, but I don't know what's happening. So just shut it. So I was like, okay, fine. You know, so that was it. Then I realized where I've come from and where I was at that point. I thought like, you know, oh, I don't know what the world is, I don't know what the world is, I don't know what the world is. Then when he told me this about this film industry, home video, I said, I don't know what the world is, I don't know what the world is. Then I realized like how far I have reached, you know, from here, to America and sitting with someone who's worked with Madonna and who's worked with Destiny Child and I had the privilege and I'm still not happy that I'm the most stupid, foolish girl ever to be alive. That's the time I realized. Then I was like, okay. Then I told him, fine, like, you know, uh, I, I mean, it it didn't change like how I thought and showed you this graph. It didn't change like that, but I started changing my thoughts. Then I told him, Charles, he, then he told me, why don't you just enroll yourself in an acting school? So I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I my dad acted in uh, theater. He said, what kind of theater? I was like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know how to theater, though. I didn't know how to theater. So that's the only acting theater thing I knew. Like my father used to go and act in Yaoshangi, uh, sports. So he used to act in theater acting. That's all I knew, you know. I was like, uh, I, I, my, my dad used to act, I remember. And he's like, what kind of theater? He's like, what kind of theater? I was like, um, courtyard theater? <laughs> Because I didn't have a term for it. I was like, it's called a courtyard theater. <laughs> you know, I just, just sound, you know, just happening and just, you know, to make him feel that, okay, Manipur is not that bad. So I was like, oh, yeah, it's a big uh, thing, you know. So, and we sing and we dance and all of that. And he's like, okay, fine. And you must have a little bit about acting and all of that. So I went to Stella Adler's. It's one of the biggest acting uh, Marlon Brando comes from that school. <coughs> Ufi Goldberg comes from that school. So he was like, I'll, en I'll enroll you. So he sent me to this school, you know. Uh, he paid for my fees and all of that. But I went there and I walked in and I was, it was a very, very small, in New York, you think New York is very big. We see big buildings, building at Ochoa, we got Spider-Man, you know, all the movies are shot. Every calamity happens in New York, if you see, if you follow Hollywood. So, so I went to this, uh, you know, I was expecting, like, you know, I Googled, uh, you know, Stella Adler's, and I was like, oh my God, this is such amazing uh, uh, school, you know, acting school. I'm going to learn so much, and I was expecting a huge school, you know, with a with lot of uh, students and this and that, you know. I went, <laughs> like, you know, roof was like so, like, I cooked thing, whatever. And I was like, really, like, you know, they taught Marlon Brando and Goofy Goldberg. I was like, I didn't trust. So I went to pay the fees and I was like, Charles, this school is very small. He's like, it's okay. You're not gone there to, you know, uh, you know, see the infrastructure, but you've, I've sent you to learn something. So, so I went there, I studied uh, Stella Adler, Adler's Technique 1. And there are techniques to acting. There are techniques like Pabong Shaham Sharmana who is a high one. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. He said he doesn't. Dance. 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 
So, I do I have a copy of acting. I know technique one, technique Stella Adler's technique one and technique two. You know, what's the difference? Acting, acting, not throw. She never go and color it. Acting is just crying and laughing and dancing and, you know, just doing what you know and what the director tells you to do. And I was like, what is technique one? I, I got really confused, no? I thought in, in, that, in that eight weeks of training, I'm going to learn everything about acting. I'll become, you know, Meryl Streep or, you know, or Madhuri Dixit or someone, you know. I thought, you know, I went with that intention. But I learned nothing. I was like, I paid so much money and I, I didn't learn anything. It was just an introduction to acting. I was like, okay, you know, so this is what I'm, I'm going to learn. Then I learned, I finished my technique one and I, I joined another class in Atlantic Theater. That's another, you know, in downtown Manhattan and it was, uh, cold reading exercise for actors. What is a cold reading exercise in, in acting? It was so detailed, you know, everything is detailed. Cold reading, monologue reading, this, that, that exercise, this exercise. I was like, gosh, you know, is this acting or uh, like becoming an MBBS doctor? It was that, yeah, kukpado. I didn't know, you know, in acting you have layers when you act. So I got more interested into it and I started performing, you know, you are given a chance to perform in, in, in when you have, when you are in, involved in a workshop like that, you get chances to express yourself and do monologues and do scenes. And I was not getting it right because I didn't belong to that society. I said, neither American nor Manipuri, nor Hindi, Indian, Mayans uh, oidre, Maitesh oidre, the Americans oidre. I couldn't fit myself. I was like, I'm learning so much. I used to sit down every day, like write down my monologues, remember my monologues. And in monologues, you have shifts, you have scenes, you have breathing, you have so many things in an acting scene. I, I was not getting it right because I didn't belong to that place. So I was like, oh, I finished all that acting workshop and I was like, Charles, I'm going to go back to Bombay. He's like, Lynn, what happened? You know, why are you so flickered minded? I was like, it's not that. I don't belong here. I can't, you know, if I don't belong here, how am I going to act? How am I going to do anything that I want to? I mean, standing in front of camera, looking pretty, walking down the ramp, you know, I don't have to do anything. But in acting, you have to be honest. Why do we like people, you know, who act well? Because they're honest, they speak from their eyes. And I couldn't do that, and I was not doing justice to my, my art, my talent. So I said, I'm going to go back. I, I can't take this, you know. I'm not doing anything, uh, you know, extraordinary to stay back and sit here and just, you know, be part of this society. So I want to come back. Maybe I'll come back once I'm, you know, once I have grown a little bit matured enough in acting and things like that. Then I said, and he's like, Lynn, are you sure? People die to come here in America, stay here, work here, do whatever they want, and they call this a dream city. A dream city that everyone comes here with their dream and they, you know, they, 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 they get it. And the only person which is gonna, who's going to stop your dream is yourself, no one else. I was like, that's all right, but I cooked the chunga with the ma do because I was so stubborn about going back. Then he told me, like, you know, the only person he, I thank him today also, I'm thanking him, you know, he's in, in my crucial period of life. He would tell me just one sentence, and it would mean the entire thing, you know, the whole month I would be questioning myself because I, I mean, I didn't have anyone. What do I tell my mother about, uh, you know, uh, acting. I couldn't connect. I stopped connecting to people that I knew. I, I would talk to mother when I, I would talk to my mom when I, when I was in school. Ima mind the way, mind the way. Like you know, I mean, till there she was there. But after that, she didn't know how to support me. You know. 
But she didn't give up on me. She would never tell me anything, you know, negative or anything that would, you know, make me worry about. She supported me. So, so I said, no, I'm going back to Bombay. He's like, are you sure you're going to do well in Bombay? I said, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to get in Bombay, but at least I have no few people with, who's going to help me. So I came back to Bombay. For three months, that was in 2012, for three months, I didn't do anything. I just didn't do anything. I kept going to one production to another. People have forgotten me. People have erased me from their memory and I had to start from scratch again. Whatever I had, I had achieved, this is, I'm talking about two years back, I had to start my career from zero. So did I give up? No, I didn't. I didn't give up at all. I was like, no, you've come back, you're doing something. And my friend suggested me, why don't you just finish your master's and just do something that, that's going to pay your bills, you know, that's going to pay your rent, your bills, whatever. And, and all my savings was getting over. Whatever I saved in America, it was just getting over because I was not doing anything. Then I went to Vishal Bharadwaj. He's one of my very good friends. I met him in New York for, during, I used to work for New York festivals, New York film festivals. And uh, I went to Mr. Vishal's office. I said, Vishal, I don't know. I've come back here. I have no support. My parents don't know what I'm doing. And I don't want to tell them my struggle, my this is my low key point, and I don't want to tell them this. Then he's like, uh, Lynn, I'll help you in whatever you want because I've seen you from New York and you've changed a lot. And uh, whatever I wish, I could, I'll do for you. So he's like, uh, What do you want to do? I said, I want to do theater. He's like, Theater won't pay your bills. You'll get 500 rupees for performing in a theater or in, in one show. I said, Really? I thought theater would pay so much money. So he's like, okay, fine, you know, if you want to do it, I'll, I'll put you through. So he's like, uh, whom do you want to meet? I was like, Mr. Nasiruddin Shah. Mr. Nasiruddin Shah has a motley, it's a production, theater production called Motley. It's a very famous production house. A lot of actors come from all over India to be with the production house, but no one, very, very limited people can get through. So he's like, okay, Vishal, you know, thank you, you know, can you just fix an appointment for me? So I was like, another excitement came, you know, as an actor, you know, though, you know, you know you're not going to get paid and you don't know how you're going to survive. That artist in me, Paum Sham Sham, I'm going to tell you, Pashagi Damakta, commercial, Oyudabadu. That passion, that that interest, whatever I wanted to do, like you know, it, at that point of time, I didn't think about money. If I thought about a uh, I would go back to modeling and just walk a ramp and you know, just get paid 20, 30,000 a walk. But I didn't choose to do that. I was like, no, I, I, I don't enjoy doing it. Why, why do I have to do that? So. It's a very interesting story with Mr. Nasiruddin Shah. It was 10.30 a.m. and I was uh, living in Bombay, Mahim. And uh, he told me, he didn't give me the number, uh, he, he sent me the number and he said, Lynn, uh, I have a message, I have told uh, Mr. Shah that you would be there at 10.30 at his door. I was like, okay. You know, I've admired him, I've seen his films, Masoom, and he's one of the brilliant, most amazing actor in, in, you know, in Bollywood. I was like, okay. So I wore something like, you know, oh, nice, and in theater we don't put makeup, and you know, we like to look ragged. Like, you know, we try to look, uh, like, you know, we're starving for days. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the look that we carry, like, you know. 
but I was like, I don't, I don't really care. I went to his house. He lives in Bandra. He lives on his second floor. Uh, I rang the bell. No one opened. I rang, rang, rang. No one opened. I called Vishal. I was like, Vishal, he's not opening the door. What am I supposed to do? He's like, uh, Lynn, just cool down. I'll call him up. So he called up. Then uh, Mr. Shah was calling me. I didn't know whose number was it. Then he's like, uh, then I, I rang the bell again. He opened. Mr. Ridin Shah opened the door with his big hair and wearing white. And he said, like, Mommy, no, I go, okay. <laughs> you know, he didn't have his glasses. And he's like, Are you Lynn? I said, uh, Yes, sir. You know, uh, I'm Lynn Vishal. And he said, Come in, come in, come in. So I went there. He's like, What would you like to have? I said, Oh, sir, nothing. You know, I was like, you know, nervous, anxiety. You know, imagine someone whom you've admired and who, you know, who's coming in front of you and asking you, What would you like to have? I was like, oh, Nothing, sir. You know, <laughs> I'm fine. So he's like, uh, so what do you want to do, Lynn? Um, I was like, sir, I want to act in theater. He's like, why don't you join NSD, National School of Drama? I was like, no, sir, if I join NSD, you know, I don't know where it's going to lead me. And I heard it's very tough, dead, 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 you know, I kept talking about it. And he's like, okay, 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 fine. <laughs> so he's like, why have you come to me? I said, sir, I want to be part of your theater group. He's like, why? It's it's annoying, you know, when you <laughs> you want to get to the point, but he kept asking me, you know, why, what, where, why, and then I started telling him, so like, you know, it's a sincere uh, approach, you know, I really want to become an actor. Uh, and he asked me my entire history: What have you done? What do you? What do your parents do? What, what you know? What? Where? When? How? Everything. I didn't expect this from him, but he asked me this entire, you know, a, a whole list of questions, and I was like, I kept answering to him. Then he said, Okay, fine. Then uh, he's like, Abhi to main kuch nahi kar raha hu. Phir bhi aaja, kal aaja. Kal hamara ek ladkon ka play chal raha hai. So you can see, no? I was like, okay, sir, I'll, I'll come and see. Then I went there, it was a all boys play. There were like some fifteen boys. And I was the only girl. They use, he rehearses in his, like, he has a second, a first floor where he rehearses all this drama and, you know, whatever he wants to do. So I, I was the first one to reach so that I get a little time with, to spend with him, with Mr. Nasiruddin Shah and, you know, asking him questions and eating his brain. So I would reach 10 minutes and they would not appreciate if you go very early because Mrs. Shah doesn't, okay, <laughs> she wouldn't appreciate that. So I reached there, like, you know, uh, shining bright, and I was like, a school car, I know, but uniform, she like, it's up for the mine, I said, like, like, you know, he didn't come, he didn't come that day. But all the boys came, and they were rehearsing their lines, and they were, like, doing, and I kept watching it. I just sat there, and I watched for three months, three months. I didn't perform, I didn't. I, the interaction with, I saw Mr. Shah every day for three months, but there was no interaction. I just kept sitting there with patience. I corner of the pamma, because it was very important to me at that point of time to learn what, where, how Bombay theater is going. So that's all I saw. That's all I learned from him. And he's like, oh, do you want to be part of my theater now? I said, yeah, sir. I thought I was part of your theater group. You know, I've been coming here every day for three months. It's like, uh, well, I have a play for you. So um, uh, there's a script like, yeah, there's a script rakha hai. Ye padho. So it was called The Arms and the Man, uh, a Norwegian play. <laughs> so I started reading that and. And he would tell me once a while, like, you know, once in a while, Lin, tum padho aaj. So when we had script reading, I would read and he would correct me. And 
I felt, you know, oh my God, you know, he's teaching me. So I felt really good. Then I started performing in theater. I got very less money. Yes, I did other jobs like modeling and commercial, TV commercials, you know, ads here and there and few shows here and there. And that was enough for me. I do one project and I, that's, that's good enough for me for one month to survive and, you know, to pay all my bills and all of that. So that's what I did. And uh, I moved on. From the Siruddin Shah to I moved on to Neeraj Kabi, who was uh, also a very big theater personality in Bombay. I, I, I joined many other groups, many other productions in Bombay with theater. I performed in, in most prestigious uh, theater, um, uh, theater group in, in Bombay that's uh, owned by Mr. Prithvi Raj uh, Kapoor. His, uh, he built that theater, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience for an actor to perform in that space. So I performed there, and, and the first day, the first show that I performed, people clapped. The live audience clapped. And I was like, wow. There was nothing beautiful, more beautiful than that. I didn't need that money. I didn't need that, you know, I didn't, I didn't look pretty at all. I was playing somebody's mother. I didn't look pretty. And I, was, I felt the most beautiful human being ever. I was like, this is what I enjoy doing. This is what I want to do in life. And I just couldn't imagine like, there was a stand-up applause, like, you know, I, 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 I felt like crying. I was like, wow! Amazing, amazing, amazing. I just cannot tell you how amazing I felt. And that didn't stop. So I, I joined two, three other more productions and I, I moved on. And, and I was like, okay, enough now, you know, you can't keep on doing this to yourself, living like a, you know. Then I started auditioning for movies and other things. So, I auditioned a lot, a lot, like at least 15 to 20, if you count in your, uh, in your, uh, what do you call, your language, it will say, interviews, and rejection, 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 rejection. How do you keep yourself awake and out of that rejection? What was that thing that drove me? I used to give up, you know. I would just sit at home and I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. I, I can I, I, okay. like, you know, I'll just finish my studies and just do something else, you know. Yeah, of course, that comes to my mind. Or get married to a rich guy and, you know, be happy. I'm not that bad looking. I can find guys like that. <laughs> Just kidding. I can do that. It's not that tough. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep on going what I want to do and <clears throat> till I exhaust my energy, my passion. So then I, um, that was when I was, this is 2012, 12 September. I, it was in Bombay Times, I subscribed this newspaper called Tel Times of India. So in Times of India magazine, uh, newspaper, there's a supplement called Bombay Times, where all the gossip of Bollywood comes in, printed. On the front page, I read about somebody making a movie called Mary Com on, on a famous sports personality from Bombay. I didn't know who was Mary Com. Since I didn't live in Manipur, I was completely out of touch uh, with sports and, you know, all of that. So I said, Mary Com, you know, it sounds interesting. Let me Google her. I Googled her and I see this, like, 
articles after articles, pictures of her, and I was like, wow, she's done great. And uh, I found my source. I don't know. When something has to happen, it will happen. If you have the right attitude and right thought, right positivity, I said, I'll find out who's directing it. I mean, uh, sorry. I, I found out it was, uh, the director's name was Omang Kumar. So I said, like, I have to find this guy. I have to find it. Just woke up and I was like, uh, I called up my friend and I'm like, uh, do you know this guy, Omang Kumar? I, I made some 20, 25 calls. Who's Omang Kumar? Who's Omang? They're like, just chill, yaar. Kya kar do? And I go, super self, Omang Kumar, Omang Kumar, kya rakha hai? Then I called up my friend Rahul Bose. I said, Rahul, who is this guy called Amang Kumar? He's like, uh, he's my friend, I know him. Oh, can you please give me his number? I took his number from him and I called up with no hesitation. I was like, uh, hello, Mr. Amang. Uh, I want to be the heroine of Mary Kong. <laughs> Like, you know, I, I don't have, like, you know, my tero, my manipuda, ma hani, my yang, tha ba hai ni ko, I said. Ikai khang da ba hai ni ko. I said, uh, Mr. Umang, I heard that you're making a movie called Mary Kong on a Manipuri girl, on a boxer, and I want to be the lead role. I really want to be the, you know, person who plays Mary Kong in that film. Uh, he's like, uh, who's this? <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, sorry, you know, I forgot to introduce myself. So, and I, I started telling him, sir, uh, my name is uh, Lynn Laishram. I'm a Manipuri. I'm an actress. I'm a trained Manipuri actress from New York. I'm a model. I'm a sports person. I think it fits the right exact, you know, I mean, I'm cut out for, for the character. He's like, uh, but you can send your pictures to my uh, production. I was like, okay, excited. I send my pictures. Didn't hear from him for three months. And the next moment, the same, same uh, newspaper, Times of India, I opened it. The first thing I read is Bombay Times because I belong to the business and I need to know what's going on, right? So I don't need to know what's going in the world, but I need to know what's going in my world. That's the industry that I belong to. So I open and I see, uh, Mary Com is going to be played by Priyanka Chopra. What? <laughs> he asked me to send pictures and he said he's going to meet me once he comes back from the Delhi and he's like, uh, and I read this in newspaper. I called up, called him up immediately. He didn't pick up my phone. I was like, "What? Ye to dhoka ho gaya mere saath." I called up my friend and "Ye to dhoka ho gaya yaar? Kya ho gaya?" Like you know, he's like, "Ha yaar, you should go and meet him." I said, "Nay, I don't know. You know, I should message him." Then I message him, so like you know, what happened? You know, you were supposed to call me back once you were back from Delhi, and you know, I was supposed to audition for the role for the part. Then uh, he didn't reply back. The amazing part was that he did not reply back to my answer. I said, okay, no problem. I have God. So I kept working, I kept doing my theater and all of that. Then one of my friends called me up and he's like, hey, you want to go to Bansali's office? I was like, why would I go to Bansali's office? He's like, uh, they're making a movie called Mary Kong. And they want some money pre, you know. I was like, really? I don't even want to talk about them. You know, I approach him. He's like, let's just go, you know. Then I went there and uh, the director came out, Omang Kumar. I'm seeing him for the first time. He's like, I was like, uh, hello, Omang. This is, Acha Lin! Now, Lord! Like, you know, I was like, yeah. And this is like, Oh, okay, okay, you know, you didn't audition for it. I said, sir, you never replied to my answers. You know, then, then I was like, okay, you know, and he's like, would you, be want, would you want to be part of the movie still? I was like, uh, of course, you know, Sanjay Lila Bansali is producing the film and, you know, I would want to be part of, the, part of it. It's such an opportunity. They said, okay, we don't have any more characters left. We have put everybody, you know, in place, we've casted everyone. 
so can you become a translator for the movie? I was like, I'm an actor. I have studied in Stella Adler's in New York. I've worked with Mr. Nasiruddin Shah. I've worked with, you know, I've performed and everywhere. And I didn't come here to become a translator or a Manipuri, you know, diction corrector. Then he's like, oh, okay. But I, he's like, Thik hai, kal Then he's like, oh. the girl who they had selected was from Bengal. She's a Bengali girl, the part that I play, uh, Bem Bem. He said, uh, Lynn, I've already casted this girl, but we, I mean, we really want you to be part of this film. Since you're from Manipur, since you have a sports background, since you have, uh, you know, uh, you belong to where this person comes from, you know. So I was like, uh, okay, so, but, uh, you know, I mean, you've cast it, you're going to create another character for me, wow, you know. <laughs> then he's like, no, we're throwing this girl out. I felt so bad, you know. I felt bad, like, you know, uh, this girl, she was training in boxing and doing this, doing that. I was like, so I would like to see the script first. Now I know. I didn't know script before, but now I know what was script now. I mean, I, I knew what was, what was he talking about. So when I sat down for script reading, there were at least 20, 21 scenes. It was an important scene ca character. Because, uh, because I don't want you know them to feel offended or anything. Smile tower is she character she she ne she ne she ne smile the main character she can ang nabaniyan close or ina kung nabaniya do do baniya da do baniya higher ga. I said okay wow it sounds so good. So I started going in and it was amazing working with Priyanka Chopra. We would sit down and read the script and you know with the director and you know I mean it was a different world for me. Yes I've worked with stars but to work so close. It was, you know, I started appreciating myself a little bit, you know. Uh, it's a struggle. It's, it's a big struggle. You guys think, you know, it's easy. Why am I not becoming heroine or, you know, oh, after all the struggle that I've gone through, why am I not doing, why, am, why my face is not on the hoardings of, of the movie? It's not easy. It's not easy for the director. It's not easy for the producer. It's not easy for anyone. That, that is involved in that project. Because we all, it's a, it's a commercial thing. We are not working for our passion. In Bollywood, you see, you have to know how much, how many crore you're making in that weekend. The opening weekend, if it's not a 100 crore film, it is not a hit. It is not a hit. And Sitting here, we think it's very, you know, it's very easy to judge. It might be very, very easy for you to say, oh, like, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to say, but it's not. They are not going to, you know, time is changing. Yes, I'm not being critical about it, but until and unless you have a sellability, you have, if you don't have a market value face, you're not gonna make it. I mean, you're still gonna struggle. But is that stopping me? That's where I'm standing right now. I'm in the middle of reaching what I want, and there's a huge gap. You know, different. We we look different from them. Are they ready to accept us? Yes, they are. They are accepting. They're making a movie on, on, on a Manipuri sports person. They have they done it before? No. They're venturing into it. So I am not going to give up. It's not that, you know, I, I, I mean, by saying I'm not going to give up doesn't mean that I want to become the become next Katrina Kaif or, you know, next uh, whoever is, is on top. They pick up Adukon or whatever. But I'm not going to give up until I make our make a statement that we are no less. Our art, culture, our sports personality have gone so far. Renedi, Mary Kong, 
uh, Devendra Laisham. They have done so well. And our actresses, look at our actresses, they are so pretty. Look at our models. Now I know I value my face, you know. When, I, when I've seen abroad, when I was in New York, I accept, I felt like I was home more than when I lived here. Why are we, you know, always, you know, why, are, why can't we accept how we look? Why aren't we doing this? The day you accept yourself, the day you thank yourself for who you are and what you're doing, you start enjoying this moment, you're not going to become anything. It can be a model, it can be uh, a doctor, it can be an engineer, you can be anybody. You can be a postman. If you do not enjoy what you do today, I don't think, you know, what Charles told me, I'm sharing this with you guys. Because it's a journey for me. It's not a struggle. And now, right now, standing here in front of you, I enjoy giving this speech. I enjoy being part of you guys, sharing this knowledge, sharing my journey, sharing whatever I've done so far. I enjoy doing it. And I enjoy acting. I don't know how much, how far it's going to take me, but I'll enjoy through my journey. I'm going to enjoy what I've got. I'm going to thank God for reaching, making me reach so far. So my thought, my suggestion, my uh, inspiration, whatever, speech, whatever, to you guys, to you youth, is start enjoying in whatever you do. Accept yourself. Do not try to copy others. Do not try to be, you know, uh, just be what you are. And that will make you stand out. That is going to be something, you know, if you follow the herd, you're gonna, you'll, you'll, you'll be in that race all your life. It's a cycle. But just cut that cycle. It's tough. It is tough. Cut that cycle and jump out, and there's a beautiful path that will follow. And that's amazing. I keep hearing from our own relatives, you know, kids who are growing up. I get the adu like the adu do na ing chat pang amar ing ashi. Are? Adu like the. I mean, how is it connected? How does your not having shoes connected to what you're going? You know where your destiny is. You can still wear a walk barefoot. You have a. You have your legs, right? Right. So just get up and walk. Start appreciating. If you appreciate today, you'll appreciate your tomorrow, whatever you've gone through. Stop judging yourself too much. And start following your dreams. And that's where I want to end. Thank you, Miss Lynn. That was amazing, amazing, amazing talk. So now I would like to invite some questions from the crowd. Who would like to give the first question? Hello, I'm Koita Kalamba. Can we have a look of your performing uh, of your performing arts at the Prithvira Stadium? Can we have a look of your uh, perform uh, performing arts done in the Prithvira Stadium? She's asking you to give stadium. a short performance of how you like uh, an acting. How do you act? Your acting. Oh, uh, I think and you have to come uh, to Bombay to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you would see me on screen very soon. I'm doing a few projects which you would be proud of. Uh, I think I would, I would look much better on screen. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions?
my name is Dr. Ravichandra and I would like to ask this. Are you planning to make any, are you planning to share your experience in future in Manipur? Just like In life from the soap, New York, Bombay, the Tapun Kribu, I have Manipur, the future experience, I have to share the opinion of life. Of course, that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> that's, I mean, uh, of, I, I don't think I've reached that far in life to uh, teach so much, but share my experience, yes, of course, that's exactly what I'm doing, and, uh, and I didn't realize I enjoy doing that. I mean, uh, <coughs> yes, yeah, someday when I reach that stage where I, when I feel accomplished, uh, I would, you know, I would love to share my thoughts, my my journey, and teach the young, you know, the youth. Of course. Thank you. Next person. Hello, I'm my next person. I'm my name is Kiranmoda. Thank you. I'm going to learn about modeling. That's something that I'm going to use. My name is Kiranmoda. My name is Kiranmoda. I'm going to learn about modeling. Modeling jaring ba yud ching da kari pokka pini ni adu Jari to Um Kaya hai ninge ba Confidence Even if you have the look And you don't believe in yourself Kain ta wisi kai no Confusion Like you know Tau dira tau roi dira Like you know in and out confidence if you lack confidence even if you have the most prettiest face or most handsome looking stud in this in the state it's all gonna work you need to have that confidence you need to believe in what you're doing it's not only about modeling it could be anything if you want to become a teacher you have to believe in yourself that you can teach you can impart your knowledge Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> yeah, no, it was all in all very inspiring. Um, and like your transition, I mean, you know, uh, first you were a sports person. Yes. So, yeah, from that you became a model. Yeah. Then uh, uh, is it uh, being, uh, you know, acting your ultimate? I mean, uh, though learning is like ceaseless, like uh, we cannot stop learning. Yeah. So do you feel like you'll end up becoming an uh, actor or more? Um, yeah, I've touched many, many, <laughs> not many, many, but yeah, I've touched few uh, professions. I was a sports person, I was a model, I'm an actor. Uh, I also, uh, like, you know, I'm learning yoga. I don't know, like, you know, after a few years what I want to do, but all I did all this while is, you know, I did what I want to do. It did nothing stop me, you know. If I want to become something tomorrow, I know that I'm not going to stop myself. And but to enjoy and believe in what I was, I'm doing at that point of time. Yeah, and I could be doing something else. I don't know, you know. It, it, I mean, I I could land up anywhere. Yeah. So like uh, now, I mean, like we might see you more on the uh, more on films. I mean, you know, we will be uh, watching you more on films now. Other than ramp walking, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> all the best, Lynn. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Any more questions? Any more questions from the crowd? striking way but for my interesting way of the size of the house are happening human being see I have a bottom the we focus on what we don't want we focus on 
what we don't have. Eh, ang mga tam 99% ay tayo. Ado, lin na, kasi, precise to hibata. Let us enjoy, let us appreciate, let us accept what we have. Sige, si, ang na fazaba, spiritual iba po ni. If you enjoy what you have, at lagi hen ba, ito, sa, the gratefulness na eroy. At that gratefulness, the feeling you have, it's a thing that you have thought of an electromagnetic wave. I don't know what it is, but the thought of an electromagnetic wave. The wave is not a wave. But the wave is not a wave. We have a horizon that is basically four dimensions. Everything will be oriented so that and get what we wanted. Ado, awak sih mana pun dah suruh tuh ibu saya pergi lajari pas strength si. Ado, mesti yang mereka dynamic work of lawyer nak pergi strength si more than fifty pergi strength si. I think five tahun lepas ni, it is uploaded already in the in media pergi. Batam tu dah orang bapa pergi tourism secretary na, perjuas di warna happy jilid ni. Ayam pergi clock si lagi. Tak, 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 pinter eh. Ayat Manipur ki strength si, si bordering with Myanmar si pun strength ni, Lok Tak si pun strength ni, Lin si pun pun strength ni, dan tuh si, ada ki lagi apa, apa ki medical college, ada lagi apa, ada ki apa ki hospitality nasir, apa ki sub, ada ki apa ki education, English kaya, apa ni mesti strength si yang mana? Ada na, let us try to appreciate, accept ourselves, and whatever we have, which ada lagi jadi apa? Jadi saya nak hantar, ini kut sana, kut jauh ni pak, kut jauh tu ni leh. Bukan lah, kut jauh tu ni leh. We are, we have come here, we come lah is what we have to appreciate ourselves. We should be very grateful. The gratefulness ni, gratefulness ni, pak ini baru ni. I pun ada grateful have what he said. Masih, it is the magic one. And this is I picked up from her speech. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Songi ming tabus yang kuile, oh, antuga, hebat, tak sahaja naik je, lakus ada songi kanu se, speech se, tabus yang china nungai gua mau bawa banyak, antuga. I appreciate your confidence, oh, I really appreciate. Antuga, ini ibu muda cum hangzen bo, awak hangum kau, antuga. Bagi, ah, ibu lagi kanu dah, bagi opinion dia bang, bagi. What is the beauty of the woman? Say, no piggy passer, but say, must it come in and define to them the happy law? A doga, my thing, no piggy unique beauty. Say, you represent my thing, woman, many pretty women, and that's right. An international and another, and another, and my thing, as a model of a model of a suit, theater artist, and more, and a suit. My doggy, my thing, no piggy passer, but you need a macanoma, book a name of a book. My doggy, the song, the person, and my doggy, fully for me, bra. Do you want to come in? I want to come in. Beauty is such a dynamic term. It has so many meanings. It depends, it changes from every individual. Beauty doesn't only mean having a pretty face and pretty, you know, whatever. I felt most beautiful when I'm strong, when I'm facing a challenge, and that you won't see in many, you know, many communities. Akoi mayangi community di uramoy ba? Shigi strength, shigi nubilal ka in those si akoi mayangi community di lay rene lay tigo. Si nubigi strength, akoi may tay oy ba? Ki yam na kaino mo yam na compassionate oy ba? Pot ang mayaw si. Nupi kai thela ise. If you see, if you travel, uh, India the khatang travel to Uganda market marketplace where you generate your income is run by men, but in Manipur it's run by women. That's our strength, and that's our beauty. Our whole economic system is run by women, and 
imagine they're circulating the income and you know they're still they're cooking with income generate the way and we chat thung the banate pishu the banate machabu mawabu luna tau the banate respect tau the banate they have this beautiful balance that you know that they that they are that they're on and it's amazing you know and the basic example i would give is my mother she works seven days a week she works seven days a week and still she manages to, she brought us up so beautifully. She made us wear what, what we are today. And still she's working, you know, and, and she did everything. She fed us, she would put tiffin in our, uh, you know, a quick how does it tiffin, happy rakani, ishin you happy rakani, and provided us with pocket money, sent us, you know, not that my father that doesn't do that. He did. But my mother is here, you know, balancing everything, multitasking. And that's the strength. I don't know how to do it. She is strength. You will not find uh, such, you know, strong opinion in the world. I think that's the beauty of our that the strength, that passion, that compassion that we have is the beauty of my day to be. Thank you, Ms. Lin. With this, we would like to conclude the interaction section. <clears throat> that was truly an inspiring story. Thank you so much. I can tell that. The reason why you are standing here and have reached this level is truly because of your positive attitude. May your story inspire the young minds present here. Um, I would like to call upon Rajkumar Somio, the treasurer of Dynamic Manipur, to hand over the gift to our beautiful and talented Lynn Leishner.